Will Smith said it best. You know, parents are the same no matter time or place. They don't understand us kids are going to make some mistakes. So I tell you other kids all across the land, there's no need to argue. Parents just don't understand. You didn't think I could pull that off, did you? Parents just don't understand. Or sometimes your kids, your spouse, your friends just don't understand what it really takes or is going to mean as you pursue your entrepreneurial dreams. If you've ever struggled with how you're going to get the support of your family and of your friends as you embark upon your entrepreneurial journey, then today is the CPTV episode for you. It is Facts Friday and I am ready to get to work. So let's get it. Giving you the blueprints that impact growth in your business and life. It's Friday, people, and you guys know how I feel about Fridays. I love them. Not just because I see a glass of wine in my future or in my present, but because Friday is the day. Oh, that's really good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good choice. Friday is the day that I get to answer all of the questions from you. And that is my favorite thing of all. So let's dive right in. Today's question actually comes from Joyce W. And Joyce's question is, Cheryl, my dream is to be an entrepreneur, but I've always been in a real job. When I finally decided to focus on my business and shared my excitement with my family, the responses were, let's just say, not what I expected. My parents were disappointed to say the least, but I persevered. Now that I'm really working in my business, I've become frustrated with my kids and spouse's level of support as well. No one is really supporting my goals. Their expectations are that I'm going to be the same person with the same amount of time as when I was in corporate America. It's like my dream is just something I'm trying and not something that's real. I'm struggling with what to do and how to get everyone's support. How did you tackle this dynamic with your parents, kids, and spouse? Wow, Joyce, you know, I remember going through the same journey that you're currently on. And um, I think that a lot of entrepreneurs kind of experience the same thing. You're not the first person to ask the question, and I don't think that you'll be the last, but there really were some very strategic, specific things and some tips that I wanna share with you today to help you kind of get through this piece because your family support is really critical to your success on your entrepreneurial journey. I mean, quite frankly, being an entrepreneur can be pretty lonely at times, um, but you do have to be able to get out there into the community. You have to be able to move and to shake. You have to know that when you're feeling down about what's going on and the ups and downs that may take place in your business, that you've got your family and your loved ones to be able to share those things with. So today I want to give you my tips for helping you get your family support. And there really are four main tips. So let's talk about when they are, what they are. First, I want you to understand and to know when to communicate what you're doing and when not to communicate what you're doing. Let me give you an example. When I first started my business, um, I was very, very excited. So I was sharing everything with everybody in my family and in my life. Um, I would talk to my mom and my parents about it. I would talk to um, my, obviously my spouse. I would talk to my friends and very easily and quickly, I was able to truly figure out who was going to be the right people to continue to talk to about it. Um, it took me a second to kind of navigate through, but I I did ultimately realize that there were some people on my list that were not going to be the folks that I continued to talk about my business journey with, the ups and the downs. And then there were some people on my list that when I was having a down, I could talk to and they would help lift me up. And if I was having an up, they would help celebrate that with me. So very quickly, I realized if this person is bringing me down further, I'm removing them from the details about my business and my entrepreneurial journey. And in some cases, in the very beginning, my parents fell into that category. I mean, they weren't 
really thrilled about the idea of me embarking upon an entrepreneurial journey. And it was really based on the fact that they were afraid, that they were concerned, and that they really didn't understand. Not to mention the fact that my parents are really traditional and they come from a world of you're supposed to go work somewhere for 35 years, retire from that place and collect your pension. So this whole idea of not working for somebody else and kind of embarking upon my own thing was very, very scary for them. And I had to recognize that that was the place that they were coming from, that it really wasn't a place of lack of support. But with that being said, I also determined that it wasn't going to be the time or the place for me to share specific things about my business, especially when I was having difficulties or challenges because I didn't want to hear the I told you so's and I really didn't want to hear anything else that was going to bring me down. Now, I also got in the habit of not necessarily sharing my successes either. And looking back, I kind of regret that idea. I mean, I really think that had I done a little bit more of sharing those successes, it would have helped alleviate the fears that my parents had surrounding, you know, whether or not I was going to be destitute and poor from starting my own business because that's really where it stemmed from. So, my first piece, as I mentioned, is know who and when to actually talk about your business journey with, but be very, very careful and very, very aware of the responses that you get in the beginning as you begin to share. Because from those experiences, you have to realize who to eliminate from that list of people that you're sharing things with and who not to eliminate from that list. So also my second tip, make sure to discuss in detail to inspire support. You really do to a certain degree have the responsibility to sell it to them. So this is what I mean. You've got to make sure that you are clearly communicating why you are doing it. And when I talk about your why, I mean what impact you really want to have with your business. Because people will support your why more than they'll support your what or their how. Not because they don't want to support exactly what you're doing, but because it's just easier to connect with a purpose than it is to connect with specifics that you may or may not understand. So. I, if you haven't figured out your real why, then by all means, take a look. I'll put a link up here to a video when I talk about um, in our series on setting up your business, kind of getting your mind right. There's an entire workbook that's attached to that series that I think will be imperative to you. I'll link the workbook down below as well, but also the links to those videos because you can take a look at really how to figure out that why statement because it's going to be easy for you to actually get people behind your struggle. And that specifically relates to your spouse and your children as well. Um, also share your goals and your long-term vision. Um, and you really kind of, when you're selling people, have to kind of bring it full circle for them and talk about how it's going to help meet their needs and really tying it to them. Um, talk about how you starting your business is going to benefit them. And I know when I first had my conversations with my children about how my schedule was going to change or how I might not necessarily be at every choir rehearsal or every parent teacher conference, um, it was the look on their faces gave me a clear indication that I needed to be a little bit more specific and explicit about what I was doing because I didn't know if they were concerned or, you know, just being a little bit selfish, how kids can be sometimes. Um, but I realized that when I began to really communicate to my children, how us having this business and how us growing towards freedom financially and how I wanted to create a legacy for them them specifically, the more I talked about that, the more excited they became about my entrepreneurial journey and the more tolerant they became about my tendency to not necessarily be able to be at every single thing or be there as soon as they got home from school or sometimes be there um, really late at night when they were already in bed and having left early in the morning before they actually woke up. And so I had to be explicit with that communication. Um, my third tip for you is set expectations and get agreement from everyone involved. And when I say set expectations, I mean very clearly set those expectations. You need to talk very explicitly about the time commitment that it's going to take. You need to talk very specifically about if you have a home office, what that means. Um, you know, when I go into my office and I close my door, I am at work and I cannot be interrupted. I need to be able to be in there and to work and to focus. Set those expectations. Very early on in my career, I always had an outside office in my offline business. And so, 
I told my kids, you know, whenever I'm at home, if I'm working from home, it's still an open door policy because if I'm here, I'm here for you. So what that does mean, however, is when I'm not here and I'm at the office, I could be there a little bit later because I need to get more work done. And so I kind of created this monster where my home office doesn't really have any boundaries because I told them if I'm here, I'm here for you. Now, what that did obviously conclude is when I'm not here, I'm not here. And it did kind of bring on the fact that I'm away from home when I'm actually working. And to this day, I am not effective at working from home. Um, so if I'm choosing what I'm going to take home and actually work on, it's stuff that I'm just putzing around with research that I'm doing, checking out data, reading numbers and analytics, but I can still have conversations and engage with my children. And I kind of created that monster, but it was from those expectations. So that's really important. Um, I also made sure that I talked to my spouse because this was a whole different dynamic, right? I mean, it was important, number one, in choosing my spouse because, you know, my current spouse was actually my second spouse um, with my second business. So my first spouse, I did not do a good job with this. Um, and so I learned that lesson very early on. And it was really important for me to be able to say, when I start this business, I'm going to have some time constraints. And so I really did clearly set expectations. So I'm going to give you guys something that I don't want you to judge me based upon, but I do have a checklist that is going to be down below for you to be able to utilize. And people who are my friends and my loved ones who are watching this video right now, they are laughing inside because they know CP is good for a checklist. Um, but I did. I actually had a dot divide up the responsibilities and duties checklist. And I literally sat and I wrote down every single thing that I was responsible for at home from scheduling doctor's appointments, cooking dinner, um, you know, vacuuming. I wrote down everything. I did kind of a, a brainstorm and purge on a piece of paper. And then I said to my husband, that dreaded thing that most men don't want to hear, we need to talk, right? So we need to talk, honey. And of course he's like, what do you mean we need to talk? And I brought this checklist with me and I sat down with him and I said, as you know, um, I'm starting this business and this business is for the improvement of our future. It is to provide us with financial freedom and to give us the flexibility to really be able to, to meet our dreams and to provide for our children and support them in college. And I started naming all the good things, right? So I'm selling him on this business. He had already gotten behind, yes, do it. But he, I don't think he really understood until I set these expectations. So I brought my checklist, which had about 30, this is all the stuff that I do, um, items on it. and. He was shocked, really, to, to see all of the things that really went into running our household and really went into the stuff that I did at home. And then I said, honestly, I am not gonna be able to handle all of this stuff anymore. I'm gonna need your support and I'm gonna need your help because now I have this whole other list of things that I'm responsible for at our business. So let's go through this list together right now and let's divide this up. I'm gonna put me next to the stuff that I'm gonna do and I'm gonna put you next to the stuff that you are going to do. And then we're both gonna sign off on this responsibilities agreement and we'll both always know where we stand and what we're responsible for. And honestly, I'm doing this because I do not want to resent you. I do not want to lose what we have because I really know that if I have to continue to do all 30 of these things at home and all these 30 things at my office and at our business, I am going to burn out and ultimately we, our relationship is going to suffer. I have learned from my past mistakes and I really want this to, to work out well. And that checklist was amazing because once we divided up those things, to this day, he still does all of his stuff. I still do all of my stuff. Um, every now and then, of course, as a married couple, we have a conversation about somebody slipping or somebody, you know, like reneging a little bit on the agreement, but you can always bring that agreement up. And so I'm gonna provide you with a link to that agreement for you, that you can go ahead, do your brainstorm purge, write down all the stuff that you do at home and schedule and have that conversation with your spouse. Because setting those expectations and getting that commitment is going to be critical. And I advise you to do the same thing with your children and with your parents. Because my mom, parents was a whole different thing. And the flexible schedule that I had since I was working for myself, I had to actually put 
a stop on that as well um, and say, just because I'm not reporting or punching a clock doesn't mean I'm available to run around the world with you because every minute that I'm with you and every time that I'm interrupted, it's costing me money. And so everyone in my life now knows that if you really want to get on my schedule, you got to do it two to four weeks out in order for that to happen because my schedule will get booked up. And so you kind of have to set those expectations and create that accountability. And most importantly, train people on that. So Joyce, I hope that that helps you. And the last thing that I want to make sure that you're aware of, and before I get into that last thing, um, I want to make sure that you recognize that whatever it is, the expectations that you set, the agreement that you come up with, the conversation that you have, the selling that you do, that you do not renege right? Whatever it is that you tell your family that you are going to do, like my children, they had an intervention with me at one point and I agreed to only have two late nights a week. Tuesday nights and Thursday nights were my late nights. And so I couldn't really renege on that, right? If a Monday came, I couldn't all the time say, well, Monday is now my late nights and Wednesday is now my late nights. Now, if my schedule changes and there's something really going on, a big project or something big, I can then go to my children and say, you know, I've got to change my thing. But my point is you have to be able to realize that you can't renege on your promises and you have to be able to check yourself when you are going outside of those expectations. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, and hopefully you guys, that was helpful for all of you out there who were in Joyce's boat and who have had the same experiences and want to find out what the best way to overcome them is. So before we finish up and head off to happy hour, because I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready. Um, I want to make sure that you guys, if you've got any advice for Joyce or for entrepreneurs like Joyce, please leave that advice down in the comments below. Um, and also answer this question for me. What are some of the things that you have done with your family to get their support? What kind of conversations, what kind of tips and tools can you share that in our community so that we can really embrace one another, but also learn some things from one another. And as always, if you enjoy today's Facts Friday, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel for more Facts Fridays just like this, that you hit that like button, that you smash that bell so that you'll always receive notifications because every Tuesday and every Friday, CPTV will be giving you all the resources and the tools that you ultimately need. And loving our Fridays, I hope you guys enjoy your happy hour. And Joyce, I hope that that information that I provided you with today was helpful. So as always, my love, I will see you next week. Enjoy your weekend.